Bless the Lord, O my soul, blessed are the Lord. We are midway through the second week of Great Lent. And many people are already feeling like they've failed. It kind of reminds me of the days when I was a weightlifter and and a long distance runner. I remember the first time I started running, it was at UC Berkeley, and I was really stressed out and a friend of mine had suggested, why don't you take up running? Well, I had never really been a runner, not even short distances, but I took his advice And in the early mornings before the campus became active, I would start running, usually just across from the south end to the north end of the campus. Eventually, I would run the perimeter of the campus, which was a long ways. And it was during that time that I also started weightlifting. Both of those were really beneficial to me, physically and mentally. But the one thing that I remember clearly is that I didn't want to be comparing myself to other people. When I was running, if there was somebody that ran faster and passed me, I didn't want to see myself as, oh, I failed. Because if I gave in to that thought, then I would have ultimately failed. It was the same way with weightlifting. There were countless guys in the gym that were better than I and buffer than I, but there had to be a beginning. So I made a commitment that I wasn't going to let them and their success hinder my efforts. It's really the same way in the Orthodox Church. When we enter into this great Lenten fast, it's easy to be discouraged. I've heard from people before who would say, oh, you know, I started out so great, you know, and I was really strict with the fast, and then I was with friends, and they all ordered hamburgers, and and I fell, and I ordered a hamburger with them, and now I feel like I've utterly betrayed my faith and my commitment to the Great Lenten fast. But when you have that kind of attitude, it's very easy to essentially set yourself up to fail for the whole of the Great Lenten fast. So if you fall, as the Desert Fathers tell us, you get up again, each time with the help of God. It's a little by little struggle. When we look at the lives of the saints, We don't see people that just simply walked onto the scene and became instant saints. It was a struggle for each one of them. Each one of them had to put everything they had into the life of the church. And oftentimes they fell flat on their faces. But each time they would get up again and start over. This is what we need to do during this Lenten period. If we fail, we start over again. If we find that we have just ordered a latte and we're sipping on milk and this is not allowed during the Lenten fast, we start over again. If we are in the services and we find ourselves distracted or bored and decide, oh, I don't want to go to another Lenten service this week. Once we realize what we have done, that we have failed to attend to the services that we are able to attend, we need to start over again and make another commitment. That's one of the valuable things about having 40 days of the fast, 40 days of the Lenten journey, is that every time we fall, we still have lots of time ahead. A good example of what I'm talking about is the homily by St. John Chrysostom that is read during the Paschal Midnight Service by every priest. 
every time we have that service, the, the priest or the bishop will read the homily of St. John Chrysostom. And St. John Chrysostom says, you know, he, he talks about the hours that we have missed. And even if it's the ninth hour or the tenth hour that we're starting, we keep on going. And so ultimately, our reward will be great because we have reached the goal, which is the celebration of the great and holy resurrection of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pascha. Why do we call it Pascha? Pascha means Passover. It is our Christian celebration of the Passover. When the Lord in his resurrection passed over death, he descended into Hades and destroyed the permanency and the power of death. That is our goal. So if we fail during the first week or the second week or the third week with the strictness of the fast or with attendance of the Lenten services, rather than just say, oh, I'm weak, and then give up, we stand up again and we say, God, help me. I want to succeed. I want to do this. And then we turn our gaze on our mother, the Holy Virgin, and we will say to her, you are my mother, and I know you care about me. I know you intercede for me before the throne of your son. Please help me through this Lenten fast. Help me to get up again. What child growing up in a household of loving parents doesn't utterly fail? And yet loving parents reach out and pick them up and stand them on their feet and they say, son, you can do this and I'm right behind you. The Holy Virgin is that mother who lifts us up and says, son, you can do this. Don't worry about having fallen short. Don't worry about having broken the fast today. Tomorrow is a new day. Don't worry about having skipped out on a Lenten service that you had been committed to going to. Tomorrow is a new day and there's new services to attend. This is the journey that leads to the resurrection. This is the journey that we can do. And we aren't doing it alone because we have the saints on our side and they're all rooting for us. So just as when I was working out in the gym with weights at the beginning, there were people in that weightlifting room that were rooting me on and say, you can do this. Let me show you how to do it. You're doing it wrong. Let me show you how. The church teaches us how to do that. The church gives us the instruction. The Lenten Trionian is a good beginning to learn how to live our lives in union with our fellow Orthodox Christians as we are immersing ourselves in the great Lenten fast. You can do it, so do it. You're not alone, my friends. You're not alone. May God help us all. If you have found this content to be a blessing, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and immortal Word.